Hi, it's Sarah from Youth Floral, and today we're gonna make a beautiful centerpiece, perfect for Valentine's or spring, or hey, your wedding. And I'm going to be using these beautiful flowers here in making this centerpiece. So I have a selection of flowers here that have different shapes and sizes, which is key when you're trying to make a very luxe and bespoke looking arrangement. You don't wanna have things looking all the same, so you need different heights and textures. So for flowers, I've got these beautiful Dizbud Mums that are grown in British Columbia. I've got these spray roses that are grown on Vancouver Island. For greenery, I have some Israeli Ruscus. I've got baby blue eucalyptus. I've got some feather eucalyptus. This stuff is imported from the United States. I've got some more Dizbud Mums from Vancouver. I've got Hypericum and mini carnations, which are imported. And then I've got these cool snapdragons that are from Vancouver. So now that you know what our ingredients are for the day, we're gonna talk about what supplies we need. So I've got a container here, and this is a vessel that I just actually found at the thrift store. So go thrifting and see what you can find. I filled it with Oasis Floral Foam. I'm not gonna go into how to prep that today, so watch my other video on that. I've got here a Lazy Susan, which is not essential, but it's kind of nice to be able to see your centerpiece from a 360 view. I've also got some pruners here, which are essential. You can't use scissors because they're not strong enough for cutting the stems, and they'll actually cause your stems to become crushed, and then your flowers won't be able to uptake water adequately. So now we know what we need. Now let's get to it. So I always start with my greenery. And I have a couple different types of greenery and that's because I want to have the more structured greenery like this is really ruscus. And then I want the more draping like this feather eucalyptus so that I've got the different sort of textures that I was talking about which make your bouquets and centerpieces look much more bespoke. So I'm gonna start with this Israeli ruscus here. It's quite a long stem. And if you don't want all of this greenery to be in it, you can actually cut it into two pieces. So I'm gonna take this piece here, which is smaller. I'm gonna take off a couple of leaves here, and I'm just gonna start by wedging it into the floral foam. You need to make sure it's wedged in quite deeply, so that way it's able to get hydrated from the foam. And then I'm gonna have this piece here on the opposite side that's extending higher. So I'm trying to create a bit of an airy look to my arrangement. When I'm greening out, which is the term us florists use for this, when I'm greening out my arrangement, I don't wanna put in too much greenery because I need to create space still for the flowers. So I'm not gonna to go too crazy here, but I need to have enough to fill in the spaces and make sure that I have enough greenery to sort of make my arrangement look complete. This is a piece of feather eucalyptus and it is very branchy. So I don't want a big giant branch just extending out of my arrangement. So I'm gonna cut it into smaller pieces here. So you can even cut off kind of the, the ones that are extending off from the side to get the smaller pieces. And just make sure when you do that, that you take off the leaves that are at the bottom because the leaves going into the foam aren't really going to uh, allow it to shove into the foam because they kind of stop it actually from going into the foam. So I'm just taking my greenery and kind of extending it around my foam here and using my Lazy Susan to kind of do a little bit of a swirl so I get an idea of what I have going on here. I love the sort of airy look that having this feather eucalyptus gives me. I'm also gonna add in a bit of baby blue eucalyptus. So I have it all together in one bunch here. So this will give you guys a little bit of an idea how big a bunch of baby blue eucalyptus is. So I'm just gonna take off this elastic here. And you'll have different types of stems in your baby blue. So you'll have ones like this that are just one stem, or sometimes you'll have stems like this guy here who have multiple branches going off the side. So you can do the same thing as the willow and just take the little niblets off the side and use those in your arrangement. So I've got a couple pieces now of the uh, eucalyptus, same thing pulling off the 
branches at the bottom or the leaves at the bottom and just extending that into my centerpiece. So far I've been focusing on the sides of my centerpiece but now I think I'm going to put a little bit in the middle just to make sure that I have even distribution of my greenery. So let's add in a couple more pieces of this feather in here. So that's looking pretty good to me for a start. We can always add in more, but that's gonna be kind of my start to my centerpiece. So I have this side, which is kind of high and extending, and then here is more my clustering of the greenery. I'm gonna start now with some bigger flowers. So these are the focal flowers, and I'm gonna to use today this beautiful Disbud Mum, which is from Vancouver. So I'm gonna cut it actually quite short, and I'm gonna pull off all these leaves because they are not very attractive at all. And I'm just gonna throw them into my compost bin. With this first one, I've decided today that I wanna have it really low. So I'm just shoving it in deep into my floral foam and it's just now kind of framed on either side by my greenery. I then wanna put something on this opposite side to sort of balance it. And so I'm gonna put another one of those Disbud Mums on that opposite side. But I'm gonna do it higher because I am wanting the height to be different on either side of the arrangement. There are many ways to make arrangements this is art after all so you can really do whatever you feel like so this is just one way of making an arrangement so now i've got my two big flowers there i'm going to add in my spray rose so let's find an example here for you guys of how this one's a good example of how sometimes spray roses will have a little bit of a niblet at the top here where there's no rose actually on it so you just take your pruners and just cut that little bit of a niblet off so that way you don't see it and then same as all your other flowers when you buy bulk flowers you're going to be removing a lot of leaves you'll find that that happens quite a bit so i'm going to take my spray rose and i'm going to i want it to nestle behind that first disbud mom that i put in place and you can always cut flowers shorter but you can never regrow them so keep that in mind Let's add in a snapdragon for some cool movement. I'm gonna stop telling you guys that you need to remove leaves. I feel like you guys have got it. Bulk flowers have a lot of leaves to them. Let's add in this guy just behind that Disbud Mom and like look at the cool textures and movement we have now from these different ones. So now I've got a lot of space in the middle and now I need to start filling that in with flowers. So I've got a couple different types of flowers that I'm going to use to fill in there. I've got these mini carnations. And so I'm going to start filling in the spaces with my mini carnations. I've also got Hypericum. And Hypericum is super cool to use because the berry look just gives so much amazing texture that I just love using it in my arrangements. I'm trying to do things sort of offset from each other so that way I have a balance. So you can see how I've got like these on either side, I've got my Hypericum on either side. Just wanna make sure that everything looks balanced. Mini carnations often have little buds that are not fully bloomed. I actually like that. It, it gives some more texture, which we've been talking about a lot, how texture is key in our arrangements. So this is kind of my process of arranging is I just kind of take a look at where things go for balance wise. I make sure that I'm often looking at my arrangement from many sides to make sure that I'm filling in the spot so it looks good from multiple sides and that I'm making sure I don't cut anything too short because yeah you can't regrow a flower so this is starting to look really good but look at the back it is empty so I need to start working on the back here or you could have a case where at your wedding it's going to be facing up against a wall and so you're only going to see it from one side and so that's a hack actually is if you're not needing to see the flowers 360 just build it from one side and then that will save you a lot of money because you're not needing to have so many flowers actually filling in the space 
So that's kind of the gist of what we're going to do here. And I'm just going to keep building out this centerpiece and you guys can kind of just watch how I do my thing. All right, guys, I am happy with this now. I decided to just make it one-sided. So you can see the back looks pretty empty. So I'm making this with the assumption it's going against a wall or something of that nature. So I don't need to fill out the back. It needs a little bit more greenery now. So that's when I'm just gonna go in and start adding in greenery. This eucalyptus one here is really long and I don't want to put like this giant piece of eucalyptus in it. So I'm gonna cut it into a couple pieces and then pull the leaves off the bottom there. And then I'm gonna be able to add in that piece of eucalyptus in a much more controlled fashion that looks a lot better. I can still use this piece here, but now it's a much more si like size, the size is much better to work with. So I'm just gonna do a couple more tweaks to it to make sure that the greenery is where I want it to be. And then let's check in after I add some more things. All right, I am back and I am done this centerpiece. So I hope you guys learned something about how to make centerpieces for weddings, for events, for whatever you have in mind. This one here is gonna be awesome for placing up against a wall. And I hope you guys enjoyed learning from me. Thanks for watching.